Hey, what's up guys? So I just wanted to give um, a little bit more detail on some of the stuff I'm doing for my transformation challenge. So I'm assuming that uh, if you've come this far off the Instagram page, um, a little bit more detail in terms of strategy and, and what I'm focusing on is what you want. So um, I'm just going to kind of run through like the post that I made um, and talk about some of the um, specifics. So overall I had a really good week, um, lost almost five pounds. Uh, down a couple percent in um, in body fat percent and um, also about a half inch off of my waist so pretty pretty awesome start for for the first week um, I think that's typical when you make an adjustment um, and you have you know a reasonable amount of body fat to lose um, if you've been feeding your body well your metabolism will probably respond to that really positively um, and I, I think that's what I've seen here um, look at my pictures not really a crazy difference um, in terms of what I, I see from week one to week two um, maybe different for you um, we're all our own biggest critics so I, I may be counting myself short in that but typically I think it takes a few weeks for that stuff to really visually look different so um, you know if you're in the same place where maybe you have like a good progress in terms of you know statistics or whatever but you don't really see it um, you know fret not because th that's going to take some time like I said usually for me two or three weeks of consistent um, weight loss and then I'll, then I'll start to be able to see it um, especially when I look at things side by side so with my nutrition this is a little bit of a different approach than what I've taken previously um, you know, and that's different coaches have different styles. There are a lot of things that work um, with nutrition. I think one of the best quotes I've ever read is like, everything works, but nothing works forever, uh, which is just to say that your body will adapt to, to whatever it is that you give it. So um, my protein, um, just over 210 grams, uh, carbs, 130, which is really low for me. Um, the last time I did this, well, let me, let me finish, and then 102 grams of fat. So that's like a dramatic difference in terms of carbs and fat for me. The protein's about, you know, normal um, for, for what I would have done, you know, the last time I really leaned down and got into single digit body fat. Um, but by contrast, 130 carbs would have probably been about the lowest I had ever been throughout that entire phase. Like even at the very end when I was down at five or six percent, um, I would have had probably 140 carbs in a day, but my fat would have been down to like 30 or 40 grams. So almost twice as much fat. So different coaches, different approaches. Um, this is what my coach has me doing right now. Um, and obviously, you know, thus far, um, things are working really well. Um, one other note on nutrition. So one of the first things um, that I've seen a lot of people eliminate, I've done this for some of my clients in the past and that my coach has done, um, is actually eliminating the post-workout shake. Um, really depends on what your goals are, but if maximal fat loss is the focus, um, this can be a really good thing. Um, typically when you add those quick, um, nutrients back in your body, although it will definitely help recovery and muscle growth, um, it will limit the fat burning process a little bit. Um, so again, depending on what your goals are, be careful when you apply this one to it. Most people I would still recommend doing like a post-workout protein shake, but um, when you're on a more restricted calorie diet, whole food and the, and the micronutrients therein um, can be way more important overall than maybe just that quick burst of whey protein right afterwards. So, and again, this might be something that changes as I get a little bit leaner. Um, we'll kind of see how it goes. Um, as far as my training split goes, so I'm on a two days on, two days off approach. Um, right now, it's really focused on um, maximal strength um, and intensity. So usually I'm doing things in supersets and it's called wave training. So typically I take things, my first set is a set of seven reps. The next one is a set of five reps. The next one is a set of three reps. Um, I bounce back and forth between a couple different exercises, and typically there's two rounds of that. So seven five three, seven five three, um, and I'll pair you know two exercises um, that will hit kind of opposing body groups like chest and back, um, or maybe like my hamstrings and shoulders, um, and even more specifically when I say shoulders, so maybe like hamstring and front delt, right? And then another day I'll be back and medial delt. Um, 
which is a little bit more advanced and that it gets difficult um, to you know isolate specific muscles like that it takes a lot of practice but um, just something for you guys to think about the thing I want to emphasize with that though is the two days off rest so even though I'm on a cutting diet I'm really trying to lose weight um, not lose weight change my body composition um, and burn fat I'm still taking two days off and I'm doing no cardio of any kind so what I want you to realize is that you have to take advantage of progression right so we're in a sprint challenge like it's eight weeks focused super intense work that doesn't necessarily mean you instantly start doing 50 minutes of cardio every day right like in addition to lifting six days a week you have to use progression because again in this capacity your body will adapt to anything that you're doing um, and so if you use all these little steps along the way your overall results are going to be much greater whereas if I immediately started lifting six days a week doing 10 minutes of hit cardio and then two or three sessions of you know 30 40 minute like the easy steady state stuff what am I going to do after that in three or four weeks when my body's adapted to it like that's when the time requirement gets really really strenuous for anybody who has any kind of normal life outside of the gym right so that's 99 percent of us um, in addition to you're going to stall out your progress will, will stop um, you'll end up overtraining um, because you're not eating to accompany that high level of training like you can do that for a short period of time but months and months absolutely not so um, that's something that I just want to say you know when you hear people say like yeah no days off and you know, all that fun stuff yeah that's absolutely right but no days off means you take your recovery just as seriously as everything else so sleep hydration nutrition especially right if you want to change how you look you have to change how you eat um, you know uh, let's see uh, wins and losses kind of talked about a little bit of this stuff um, on Instagram this week but I finally incorporated some fish into my diet which was a big deal for me um, if you're curious about any of those recipes um, please by all means hit me up but um, really I just combined some skipjack tuna um, with some guacamole uh, skipjack comes in a can so I usually warm it up um, chop it up and then I add some lettuce hearts of romaine lettuce um, guacamole and a couple fried eggs and I switched that up um, good friend of mine gave me that recipe thanks Ronnie if you happen to watch this um, and see um, I really think that's it uh, kind of a breakdown so if this video prompted any further questions for you please by all means hit me up I'll try to do this once a week um, just to kind of share with you guys uh, what I've learned and what's working and what's not so uh, any feedback I'm wide open for it so uh, thanks for checking this out. Hope it was a value and uh, see you later.